Welcome to Love Chronicles, where we explore the enchanting world of love in all its forms. Today, we dive deep into the intricate dance of the heart, the symphony of emotions, and the transformative power of love. Join me, Sofia Lopez, best-selling author of romance novels, as we unravel the mysteries and magic of this universal language of the soul. Dr. Adams, as a psychologist specializing in couples therapy, you've seen firsthand the impact of expressing love. In your experience, what role does understanding each other's love languages play in a relationship? Ah, excellent question, Sophia. Gary Chapman's concept of the five love languages is a powerful tool in understanding love's expressions. When partners understand and speak each other's love language, it's like unlocking a secret communication channel. Whether it's words of affirmation, acts of service, receiving gifts, quality time, or physical touch, recognizing and valuing these expressions can significantly enhance the emotional connection between partners. That's fascinating, Dr. Adams. It seems that being fluent in your partner's love language can really transform a relationship. Have you seen cases where this understanding led to a breakthrough in communication barriers? Absolutely, Emily. I recall a couple who were on the brink of separation. One partner primarily expressed love through acts of service, while the other valued quality time above all else. Their efforts were getting lost in translation. Once they started to appreciate and adopt each other's love languages, it was like watching a flower bloom in Fast Forward. They became more emotionally attuned to each other, leading to a significant improvement in their relationship's health. That's such a heartwarming example. It goes to show that love isn't just about grand gestures, but also about understanding and speaking to each other's emotional needs. Speaking of which, Emily, with your background in relationship counseling, how do you approach the topic of love languages with couples? I start by emphasizing the importance of self-awareness and communication. It's crucial for individuals to recognize their own love language first and then openly discuss it with their partner. This conversation can be an eye-opener for many couples, leading to a deeper understanding and appreciation of the ways they express and receive love. It's about building a bridge between the hearts, where simple actions or words carry profound meanings. Truly, love is a bridge built from understanding, respect, and communication. Now shifting gears slightly, how do you think the expression of love has evolved over time, especially with the advent of technology? Technology has indeed transformed the way we express love, Sophia. Digital communication allows for constant connection through texts, emails, and social media. However, it's a double-edged sword. While it facilitates expressions of love across distances, it can also lead to superficial interactions or misunderstandings if not used thoughtfully. It's the quality, not the quantity of communication, that nurtures love. That's a key point, Dr. Adams. With all these ways to connect, it's more important than ever to be mindful of how we express love and ensure we're genuinely connecting with our partners. Sophia, as a romance author, how do you incorporate these modern forms of communication into your storytelling? In my novels, I strive to capture both the timeless essence of love and the contemporary challenges it faces, including technology. Characters might fall in love over text messages or find their relationship tested by the pressures of social media. It's a reflection of real life, where love must navigate the digital age's complexities. The core message, however, remains the same. Love, in its many forms, is about connecting deeply with another soul, whether through a handwritten letter or a text message sent across the globe. That's an excellent point, Sophia. It underscores the adaptability of love across different mediums. But stepping back, Emily, from a counseling perspective, how do you see the role of self-love in maintaining healthy romantic relationships? Self-love is foundational, Dr. Adams. It's the soil from which all forms of love grow. When individuals cultivate a deep sense of self-worth and love, they're better equipped to share love with others. It's about filling your own cup first so that you can pour into others. In counseling, I often work with clients on self-love practices to help them build healthier, more fulfilling relationships. I couldn't agree more, Emily. 
In fact, many of my characters learn that self-love is the first step towards opening their heart to someone else. It's through their journey of self-discovery and acceptance that they're able to forge stronger, more meaningful connections. Indeed, Sophia. And it's interesting to note from a psychological standpoint that self-love impacts not only romantic relationships, but also platonic and familial ones. The relationship we have with ourselves sets the tone for how we interact with others, influencing our capacity for empathy, understanding, and genuine connection. Absolutely, Dr. Adams. So in a world that constantly challenges our self-esteem and worth, how can one practice self-love effectively? From a writer's perspective, I think storytelling can be a powerful tool for self-reflection and growth. Reading about characters who overcome insecurities or learn to value themselves can inspire readers to embark on their own journey of self-love. Sometimes seeing yourself in a story can be the catalyst for change. And from a psychological perspective, practicing mindfulness and self-compassion are key. It's about acknowledging your thoughts and feelings without judgment and treating yourself with the same kindness you would offer a friend. Regularly engaging in activities that nurture your mind, body, and soul is also crucial for building and maintaining a positive self-image. That's a powerful combination, Sophia and Dr. Adams. Mindfulness, self-compassion, and literature can actually work hand-in-hand -hand to facilitate self-love. But let's pivot slightly. How does this foundation of self-love influence one's ability to navigate the complexities of modern love, especially with the added dimension of technology? It's fascinating because, in many ways, technology both complicates and enriches romantic dynamics. On one hand, the constant connectivity can make it harder for individuals to maintain boundaries and find space for self-reflection. On the other, it offers unprecedented ways to express love and maintain connection, regardless of distance. A strong sense of self-love helps individuals set healthy boundaries and use technology as a tool for connection rather than a barrier. Exactly, Sophia. And research supports this idea. Studies have found that individuals with higher levels of self-esteem and self-compassion are better at navigating the challenges of online dating and social media. They're more likely to approach online interactions with a positive mindset and less likely to experience the negative emotional impacts of, say, comparison or rejection. That's reassuring to hear, especially with how pervasive online interaction has become in our pursuit of love. But how do you think the digital age has changed our expectations of love and relationships? The digital age has certainly amplified the expectation for instant gratification, the idea that love should be found quickly and without much effort, mirroring the swiping culture of dating apps. Yet my characters often discover that real love takes time, patience, and self-awareness. These qualities seem to be at odds with the fast-paced nature of our digital interactions. And adding to that, Emily, the paradox of choice plays a significant role. With seemingly endless options available through dating apps, people might feel overwhelmed and indecisive, leading to what we call choice paralysis. The key, backed by psychological research, is to focus on what really matters in a partner, shared values, emotional availability, and personal growth, rather than superficial attributes. Choice paralysis and instant gratification seem like modern-day obstacles to love. With this in mind, how do we reconcile these with the need for deep, meaningful connections that withstand the test of time and technology? One of the ways to reconcile these is through storytelling, whether it's through books, movies, or even personal stories shared with friends. Stories have the power to remind us of the timeless aspects of love, sacrifice, commitment, and growth. They can inspire us to look beyond the surface and appreciate the deeper qualities that foster lasting relationships. Absolutely, Sophia. And from a psychological perspective, engaging with stories allows us to exercise empathy, putting ourselves in the shoes of others. This exercise can enhance our understanding of different aspects of love and relationships, encouraging us to value emotional depth over instant gratification. Furthermore, Engaging in meaningful conversations about these stories, like we're doing right now, can also reinforce these values. 
It sounds like communication, then, is key, both in consuming stories and in our own relationships. Leveraging open, honest dialogue can help navigate the complexities of love in the digital age. How important would you say communication is in maintaining a healthy relationship, especially when technology can often distort messages or intentions? It's paramount, Emily. Effective communication fosters understanding, empathy, and connection. When couples practice transparent and honest communication, they're better equipped to navigate the misunderstandings that can arise from digital communication. Moreover, setting aside time for face-to-face -face interactions or even voice calls can help maintain the warmth and intimacy that text-based communication may lack. And it's those little things like hearing a loved one's laughter or seeing their smile that remind us of the human element in love. In my writing, I often explore how technology can serve as a bridge, but also as a barrier. Encouraging readers to find a balance helps them reflect on their own relationships and the role technology plays in them. Reflecting on one's own relationship with technology and communication seems like an essential step for anyone navigating love today. It's about using these tools to enhance, rather than detract from, the human connection. Exactly, Emily. And another thing I like to delve into through my stories is the concept of love languages. Understanding and speaking your partner's love language, be it word of affirmation, acts of service, receiving gifts, quality time, or physical touch, can significantly bridge gaps that might be widened by the impersonal nature of technology. That's a fascinating point, Sophia. The concept of love languages, developed by Dr. Gary Chapman, highlights the importance of personalizing our approach to love. It's not just about knowing what makes someone feel loved, but also about adapting to it, which can be especially challenging in a world where digital interactions are often the norm. Adapting to love languages in a digital world. That's intriguing. Do you think technology has the potential to enhance the expression of these love languages, or does it complicate matters? Well, Emily, it can certainly do both. For instance, sending a thoughtful text or sharing a playlist can be modern expressions of words of affirmation and gifts, respectively. Technology, when used mindfully, can amplify the expression of love languages. However, it becomes complicated when we rely solely on digital communication, neglecting the importance of physical presence and touch. Indeed, and adding to Sophia's point, Technology should be viewed as a supplement to, rather than a substitute for, traditional expressions of love. Emphasizing physical presence and making time for undistracted conversations can help maintain the feeling of being connected in a way that digital communication cannot fully replicate. So, finding balance and making a conscious effort to engage in physical expressions of love is key. It seems like mindfulness is a recurring theme here. Being mindful of our use of technology, of our partner's love language, and of the quality of our communication. Absolutely, Emily. Mindfulness encourages us to live in the moment, appreciating the little things that make relationships special. It's about choosing to be present, both physically and emotionally, which is essential in cultivating a love that's both deep and enduring. And let's not forget the role of novelty and adventure in strengthening love. Psychological studies suggest that couples who engage in new and exciting activities together can reignite feelings of passion and intimacy, akin to the early stages of their relationship. It's an aspect of love that technology can actually facilitate by providing ideas and opportunities that might not have been accessible otherwise. That's a really good point, Dr. Adams. It seems like technology, when used creatively, can actually serve as a bridge to more traditional expressions of love, such as adventure and shared experiences. Could it be that technology, often criticized for making us more isolated, has the potential to bring us closer together in unexpected ways? It's a paradox, isn't it? On one hand, technology can contribute to a sense of isolation, but on the other, it offers countless ways to connect and create shared experiences, even when we're physically apart. For instance, watching a movie together while video calling or playing an online game together can create a sense of closeness and shared reality. 
Indeed, Sophia. And this brings to light the importance of intentionality in our relationships. Whether we're utilizing technology or engaging in face-to-face -face interactions, the underlying intention should always be to foster connection and understanding. This intentionality can transform even the simplest activities into meaningful expressions of love. It's all about the effort we put into understanding and connecting with our partner, isn't it? Whether through technology or in person, showing that we care and are willing to invest time and effort into the relationship is what ultimately deepens love. Yes, Emily, and let's remember that stories of love, whether in novels, films, or the narratives we share with each other, often reflect these deep desires for connection, understanding, and growth. They inspire us to look beyond the superficial and strive for a love that's rooted in genuine understanding and mutual respect. Stories do play a profound role in shaping our perceptions of love. They can offer us models for how love can evolve and adapt, even in the face of challenges. Reflecting on these narratives can inspire us to navigate our own relationships with more grace and resilience. Reflecting on what both of you have said, it seems love, in its essence, transcends the boundaries of time and technology. It's about the constant effort to connect, understand, and grow together. Dr. Adams, Sophia, before we wrap up, could you each share one piece of advice for our listeners striving to deepen their relationships? Absolutely, Emily. My advice would be to practice active listening. It's a simple yet immensely powerful tool in any relationship. By truly listening to your partner, not just hearing them, you validate their feelings and perspectives. This fosters a deeper emotional connection and shows your commitment to the relationship. I wholeheartedly agree with Dr. Adams. And to add to that, I'd say, never underestimate the power of expressing gratitude. A simple thank you for the everyday things can make a world of difference. It shows appreciation for not just what your partner does, but who they are, and it reinforces the bond you share. Wonderful insights. Thank you both. It's clear from our discussion that love is a multifaceted experience, enriched by our willingness to be present, listen, and show gratitude. Whether through the pages of a novel, the advice from a therapy session, or the shared experiences facilitated by technology, love remains a universal quest for connection and understanding. Well said, Emily. At the end of the day, love is what drives us forward, inspiring stories, healing, and innovation. It's the heart of the human experience. Indeed, and as we continue to explore and understand love, we not only enrich our own lives, but also contribute to a more compassionate world. Thank you, Emily, and thank you, Sophia, for such an enlightening conversation. And thank you, Dr. Adams and Sophia, for sharing your expertise and insights. And to our listeners, we hope today's discussion inspires you to nurture your relationships with intention and love. Until next time, keep seeking deep connections, and remember, love is all around us. Goodbye.